Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out a almost ready to fly quadcopter from a company called Radio C. Now Radio C is a UK based quadcopter slash drone company and they supply quadcopter parts but they also sell their own almost ready to fly and ready to fly drones slash quadcopters as well and this is one of them now this is a model based around the rag e 200 h frame which i believe is also a uk based frame and the last time i saw one of these frames was actually in a rotor riot video where they crash tested it and that is one of the main features of the raggy frame is that it is pretty much indestructible well so they say anyways and Radio C actually offer a one year warranty with this model, which is something very rare in this hobby because things break all the time. But they have a lot of faith in this design and this frame. So there you go. Now, this model is quite expensive. And I guess that is the price that you pay for being able to send stuff back. You see, I usually buy stuff from China because it's very cheap but you do pay the price sometimes in that you get a lot of components that are defective and it's cheaper to buy another one than send it back etc with this type of thing you are able to send it back and they will repair it for free now they're saying that it's just the labor that is free and I guess they have to judge each case individually whether they're going to replace parts for free etc but anyways this frame yeah it's really heavy duty and in order for it to be heavy duty the model is quite heavy as well now before I get on to that this model also has their booster pack which is you get a battery and you also get a pagoda antenna as well so the battery is a 4s it's a drone lab and it's 1500 milliamp it's a 4s and high c discharge rate and that just goes in there like that now if you look on the website the camera it says that it's based around the run cam 2 camera but mine's come with a foxier camera and i spoke to chris at radio c and he says that they are probably going to have to run the hs1190 cameras because of the mounting so yeah really interesting way that the camera mounts and i'll take the top off and show you that in a bit but yeah so i think the dry weight of this one is 300 and 60 grams so yeah quite a heavy model it's a four inch model by the way as well so it's running four inch propellers and then i think with a battery it's like 520 grams so it's not really designed to carry a gopro but you can do if you want to but it's it's going to feel quite sluggish i think with a gopro on there so i have been flying it without it but yeah this thing is it's like a brick honestly it's not going to break whatsoever so let's talk about the specs so it has got the emax red bottom 2205 2600 kv motor so quite high kv and then the props are also supposedly indestructible they are dal they are 4045, I think. Let me just check that. They are 4045, yeah. So, yeah, fairly strong prop. And, yeah, I think you probably could break it, actually. But, yeah, you'd have to have a good go at it. They give you a spare set of these as well. You can get it in different colours, by the way, this frame. But I absolutely love this colour scheme. I think it's really great. So the ESCs, they are 20 amp BL Halley S pocket rocket ESCs. And then we've got a SP Racing F3 flight controller in there, which you can access without taking the top off. Now this is the ARF version, so it is for binding with the FlySky protocol. I've got my FlySky i6X here, so this is the 10 channel one. And I think they sell an RTF as well with the i six so we have got the fly sky receiver in there it's the full size one and you do have to take the top off to get it to bind so we have just these screws here sadly they are two mil hex screws so yeah the 
screws can get pretty ragged if you pardon the pun but yeah they're actually flat so they're not too bad and then we've got a 25 milliwatt 40 channel VTX in the back here as well and you have to take the top off there to change the channel as well I believe it's also a switcher so it will also output 400 milliwatt as well so yeah fairly nice specs it does have an on-screen display but it's not beta flight or clean flight on-screen display because it's the on-screen display from the HS1190 camera which is plenty sufficient in fact you can see the little cable there they haven't supplied the little controller that can change the on-screen display but I've got plenty of them anyways so yeah that's pretty cool now the flight controller comes flashed with clean flight but I spoke to Chris and basically you can have clean flight or beta flight flashed on it you have to request that and of course if you want a custom one set up they'll do that for you as well just email them and they will change any part that you want I guess but yeah they have sent this to me to check out so yeah I have bound it to my Flysky transmitter. It was already set up to have Acro and Horizon and Angle on a switch and to arm on a switch as well. It's got a beeper built into it as well, so pretty much everything that you need as a beginner. And like I say, it's built like a brick, so yeah, you should be able to do plenty of crashes with it and have no issues there and you should just be able to get up and fly it. So what I want to do is actually take the top off here and show you what's inside. Okay, so I've taken these screws out here and you have to give a hefty pull to get the top off here. So I'll just take the XT60 connector out so we can see what we're looking at. So this is the SP Racing F3 here. And then underneath there we've got a MXK Pro V2 power distribution board with a built-in LC filter and various regulators for 5 volt and 12 volt and then we have got the fly sky receiver here this is the x6b i think it is called so we just have the antennas coming along on the inside there so i guess you could stick them out the top if you wanted better range there but yeah like i say we've got the bind button here as well the other one is like a firmware updater but yeah one's the bind button so I think you have to take the top off really I suppose you could poke something through here but yeah you really need to take the top off which isn't too much of a problem and then we've got the tiny ESCs here they just feed through here yeah very nice and again those just going into the power distribution board here then we have the camera and that is being powered off the 12 volt and then we have got the VTX here as well so can I see the button yeah so the buttons there for changing the power the band and the frequency we've got a little LED on there as well so it's going to be the usual very long press to change the power and then like a couple second press to go through the bands and then a single press for the eight different channels it's actually a built-in microphone on this VTX as well so you don't have to plug up the audio from the camera there and yeah we've got the V sensor on here as well going into the power distribution board we have got the beeper there on the back so with it being on the inside it might not be as loud but it's actually a fairly big beeper so yeah it shouldn't be too bad there and then we have got the input output there plugged in for the receiver as well. I really like how everything is just sort of contained here and then we have got these standoffs here as well that just stick underneath and everything is absolutely protected so that is really cool. Okay let's go for the line of sight with this one starting off in angle mode. It's a little bit breezy today. Everything's okay so far. So let's have a check out at the punch. That's not bad at all. I'm not quite expecting it to be on par with a five inch, obviously because it's a four inch. Oh, it's a noisy thing as well. But it's fast if you want it to be. 
Yeah, it feels quite nicely tuned. Let's go into aqua mode here. Yeah. They have come a long way with clean flight, that's for sure. Look at that. Certainly feels dialed in for the line of sight anyways. I think this would be a great model for someone fairly new who has mastered a micro and then is after something that's indestructible to play around with. I also think if you use maybe a slightly smaller battery it'd have more punch as well. Like this is a 1500, I think a 1300 would do just as well. plenty of power there. Like I say, you can go five inch for more power, but this flight's really nice. Look at that. It just does rolls and backflips really nicely. You can make it dance. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I love the colour scheme of this thing. Yeah, really locked in. I'd be surprised if I had to change any of the pids. I'm having too much fun with this one, I have to say. I love flying line of sight. Not heard the beeper going off either at the top of the throttle, so there we go, it goes. But I don't think it's drawing too many amps, but as the battery depletes, obviously, the buzzer will start to go off. Oh, this is just too much fun. Look at that, just floats. I feel like I've got loads of control with it. It's not too twitchy, it feels really smooth. Should get a decent flight time with that big battery as well, I would say. Maybe even five minutes with it. But I've only got one of these batteries, so I might stick a 1300 on for the FPV flight. Anyways, <laughs> I think that's enough. Let's come in for a landing and I'll do some FPV with it. Okay, so here is some DVR footage taken from my Fat Shark Dominator HD2s. Yes, my HD3s are still at Fat Shark for repair. Now, this thing flew fantastically. The only thing that I've been disappointed with is the amount of noise that is filtering through to the video. Now, it's not debilitating whatsoever. And when you look at the power system, it shouldn't really be there, so we have got a ALSI filter on the power distribution board and we've also got various regulators as well. So I would say that this seems like a fairly noisy system, so maybe some capacitors on the ESCs would help that or maybe a better filter on the VTX. But Either way, it flew really nicely. I was really impressed actually with Clean Flight. I believe it's a very similar setup to Beta Flight now since they changed it, so that doesn't surprise me at all. I'd probably adjust the PIDs just a little bit, maybe up the P gain a little bit on the pitch but yeah I I really liked this model in general now I know what people are going to be thinking when they see this they're going to say wow that price is crazy and yeah it is that is the price that you pay for the labor of having a drone built in the UK and having the ability to send it back when something breaks and get the, the free labor. So that's what you're paying for. And, you know, if you think that is too much, then 
build yourself one and you know go the cheap route but if you don't have the time to do that and mess around with sending stuff back to China and you know buying parts and stuff then you know this might be an option for you and yeah I think it's definitely going to be a very robust model as for if you want to stick HD cam on that, I would recommend a Mobius Mini for this one. I think I think a GoPro would bog it down a little bit. It flew really nicely. It felt like there was plenty of power there to do all of the normal maneuvers that I like to do, and there was plenty of airtime, etc. I don't think there's as much punch there as a five-inch model, but sometimes five-inch models can be scary, especially if you are fairly new to all of this. So even this one, you know, with its high pitch, high revving motors, it sounds scary, but actually it's it's quite nice to fly and it's not gonna catch you out. And I think this would be a good model as well to sort of start off in stability mode and then go up to horizon and start doing your flips and stuff and then eventually switch to acro once you have figured all of that out but as I always tell everyone the best thing to do first of all is get yourself a really cheap micro that can't do any damage with brushed motors in fact this lad walking up to me now he's done exactly that he went out and bought a little brush micro and his mass it and then he's gone and bought a Ishin lizard so yeah finding that people coming up to me whilst I'm flying and interested I think that's really cool but yeah in general I like this model only improvements for me is the amount of noise on the video everything else I really like and yeah it's it's pricey as well so those are the two sort of downsides for me but everything else really is a positive and I'll put a link in the description to this model if you wish to get one. So there you go that is my review of the Radio Seat Raggy ARF and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers!